Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance to Sagar Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we'd be very happy to have, have His Holiness Chandramani Swami with us, who is going to be speaking on Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Verse 28, and the chapter is titled Dhritarashtra Quits Home. Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to you and all goes to Sri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, my obeisance to you and all the devotees. We have 15 participants, Marge, and I'm hoping more will roll in. <laughs> yeah, as long as they roll in and don't roll out. <laughs> <laughs> we hope, Maharaj, we hope. <laughs> Some will stop rolling at a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Ata dicham dicham yantu, wa agyata gatir bhavam, itir vaka asa sankalam, um sam guna vikasanaha. Translation Please, therefore, leave for the north immediately, without letting your relatives know, for soon that will, for soon that time will approach. Which will diminish the good qualities of men. So, this is uh, Vidura instructing Vidurashtra. Therefore, one can compensate for a life of frustration by becoming a Dira, or living home for good without communicating with relatives. And Vidura advised his elder brother to adopt this way without delay because very quickly the age of Kali was approaching. The conditioned soul is already degraded by the material association. And still, in the Kali Yuga, the good qualities of a man will deteriorate to the lowest standard. He was advised to leave home before Kali Yuga approached because the atmosphere in which was created by the door, his valuable instructions on the facts of life will fade away due to the influence of the age which is fast approaching. Become Naratam, a first class human being, depending completely on the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, is not possible for an ordinary man. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita 728 that a person who is completely relieved of all taints of sinful acts can alone depend on the Supreme Personality of God of Sri Krishna. Vidarasa was advised by Vidura at least to become a Vira. In the beginning, if it were not, if it, if it were impossible for him to become a sannyasi or a naratama, persistently endeavoring on the line of self-realization helps a person to rise to the conditions of naratama from the stage of dira. The dira stage is attained after prolonged practice of the yoga system. But by the grace of Vidura, one can attain the stage immediately simply by willing to adopt the means of the Dira stage, which is the preparatory stage for sannyas. The sannyas stage is the preparatory stage for Paramahansa, for the first grade devotee of the Lord. Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deide Gaurabhani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pasyatya Devisatarine Pancha Kalpa Terugas Cha Kipa Sindhu Kaye Pacha Vitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaho Nupa Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Rishi Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama
So Dhritarashtra is receiving good advice from his younger brother Vidura, who is very much concerned about the welfare of Dhritarashtra after having been completely destroyed, losing his whole all of his sons. He was blind materially, he was blind spiritually. He could not understand his, his position. His material blindness was due to his attachment to his sons who were all now killed by the battle of Kudushetra. And now he, is, he has nothing left except his good well-wisher son, Vidura. And Vidura wants to help his brother. So he's giving him good advice now leave for the north, go to the place of the Himalayas where the great sages, and finish your life there with tapa, penances and austerities and perform devotional service. Here, Srila Prabhupada talks about this particular stage of life called Dira. Dira, in the actual translation of the word, means sober, but not disturbed by happiness and distress. There's a preliminary stage for the higher stage of the bhakti, where one becomes completely fixed in pure devotional service. But before one can come to that stage, one should practice at least the stage of dira. And that is the material world is full of dualities. There is always uh, causes of happiness and causes of distress. As the living entity, it gets thrown from one particular situation to another. Karanan Guna Sango Shil Sadasa Joni Janmashu. A living entity is not Dero in the material world. He is attached to his so called plans for happiness and always being distressed when he cannot find, find happiness in his plans or when his, uh, his attempts for happiness fail. So this Dero stage helps one to come at least to the mode of goodness. And it's explained that the mode of goodness, there are certain qualities that are conducive to the execution of devotional service. Um, on the Adira stage, Adira means those who are ruffians, who are uh, easily swayed by the movements of the material energy. They are, um, they are like des described like a leaf in the wind. When the wind blows, the leaf moves in one direction. And if the leaf, when the wind blows again, it'll go in another direction. So this is the May age of this age. When people are not fixed in any particular consciousness. They only how to push back the suffering and to find happiness through various means to the senses and minds and also the intelligence. So uh, here, he's becoming, uh, go now, he's not saying wait. And this is also an indication of a principle that is very fundamental to our success in Krishna consciousness. Devotional service is now. It's not later, it's now. Now in the sense is that Later never really comes because the situations that we're waiting for are never guaranteed. So one should always act on Krishna consciousness at any stage of life. And depending on what particular situation one is in, one can serve the Lord in that particular situation. Uh, Kali Yuga is about to come. Uh, Vidura, who is actually an incarnation of Yamaraj, he, he has what is called his tree colored gown. He can see past, he can see present, and he also knows the upcoming future. He is good as the super soul. So, in his role as uh, his younger brother of Peter Rastra, he's giving him very sanguine advice, very good advice, which will help him to accelerate his, his purification and ultimately achieve Krishna consciousness. So here we find that there's a very fundamental statement that is being repeated throughout this discussion here, and that the age of Kali destroys all good qualities of the living being. Mandasumanda mateo manyabhaja upadvitaha, upayena apayesa sabda, 
flow you gain is this you gain this moon janaha wonder sumanda mataya wanya bhagya katataha so that this verse spoken by sutta goswami from the srimad bhagavatam says that in the in this age of kali people are always uh, misguided unlucky um always disturbed and always quarrelsome this is the age of kali so even if a person is trying to develop good qualities we find that it's it's greatly challenged by the atmosphere of kali yuga because uh, kali yuga is so polluted with the uh, lust anger greed illusion pride envy fear so many of the qualities that destroy the good qualities of the living entity is permeated and presented in Kali Yuga as the way of life. And um, so, therefore, one should understand that in this age, it's not a very good age for spiritual life. But then again, that is a conjecture. There is, there is a good, very good age, is that in this age, because of the age, Kalir Doshani Jai Rajan, Asti Eko Mahagun, Kirtana Evi Krishna Siyam Mukta Sangam Param Vajan. Kalir Doshani Di, Nidi means uh, ocean, and Dosha means false. Kalir refers to this age of Kali. So in this age of Kali, it is described there are an ocean of false. Uh, one after another, there are so many disqualifications of a living being from spiritual life. And materially, people are dysfunctional. They can't even be a good materialist in this age without committing sinful activity. So it's a, uh, it's a very, uh, what we say, uh, deteri deteriorates all the good qualities of the living being. But as the verse goes on, Asti Eko Mahagun, that in this age there is one bright light that can dissipate all the effects of the of Kali Yuga, and that is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So out of all of the uh, you say unlimited ways that one can become destroyed, most materially and spiritual, still there is one hope. And it is explained according to the level of consciousness of the living entity in a particular age, a particular type of yuga dharma, a means for self-realization, is given. So in this age, um, the chanting of the holy name is the yuga dharma, the means for, for self-realization, and the means to push back the effects of Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is so bad that uh, even good people um, um, lose all of their good qualities simply by trying to live within this age. It's a very uh, dysfunctional age. And as the Bhagavatam explains, as time goes on, the age will continue to deteriorate. And more and more, it will become impossible for people to live in this age. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come with the uh, with the elixir or the medicine. Enche asadi maya nasi baralagi harinam maha mantra lao to mage. That in this age of Kali, there is the medicine to overcome the disease of uh, Kali Yuga. What is that disease? desire to enjoy the senses to unlimited heights. And what is that medicine? The chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So if one practices seriously daily, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then one Prabhupada says, if we do this on a, on a, on a large scale, then Kali Yuga becomes a Sachi Yuga. It becomes the golden age where People will become fully Krishna conscious and all good qualities will manifest. So here we see the antidote for the, uh, the horrible age of Kali. And if you read, Srila Prabhupada, um, of course, didn't write the 10th canto, a uh, 12th canto, but he did, when he was here, give lectures on the 12th canto from notes that he had 
previously recorded that were to be the 12th canto purports. And Prabhupada would read from them quite regularly, knowing that um, it was important for us to hear it at any time because of the age. And uh, when you read it, it reads like a statement of prophecy as it predicts what is happening now as was written thousands and thousands of years ago. So um, when we take the words of Srimad Bhagavatam, we actually take the words of Krishna, who knows past, present, and future. And therefore, this age is considered to be good in the sense that the means for self-realization is quite easily available, not only for those who are qualified to practice, but any, but for anyone who is sincerely wants to um, rise above the uh, effects of Kali Yuga. So this chanting of the Holy Name is the elixir or the means for pushing back the oils of Kali, which is so all-pervading. We see that uh, um, lying, cheating, uh, enmity, envy, uh, various types of uh, cruelty manifests in this age as something that is routine. <laughs> we may, as devotees, we may somewhat be sheltered from this uh, horrific age, but all around us, people are being destroyed by this age. Um, it was a very difficult age. And it says that as the age continues, when it gets towards the end of the age, uh, people's lives will only be 20 to 25 years old, Prabhupada would say. If a person lives to 25, they will be considered a grand old man. That is the quality of the age. And sometimes people speculate about um, dinosaurs. We read in the, both in the Shastras and, of course, on the, on the media, there was a class of very ferocious monsters that were roaming the earth that were the gigantic um, lizards and gigantic this monsters. Um, Prabhupada says these, these, were, these were the effects of previous Kali Yugas. Because these beings come at the end of Kali Yuga, and then people are just devoured by these beings. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us the, the means to get out of the effects of Kali Yuga. And he appeared in the year 1486, which was the actual beginning of the Golden Age. His appearance in the world herald about the beginning of an age within an age. What is that age within the age? where every town and village throughout the world, the holy name of the Lord will be chanted. So as time goes on, Kali Yuga will continue to deteriorate the good qualities of the age. And simultaneously, Lord Chaitanya's mission will start to develop more and more and more. And you'll see these two complete types of worlds, two distinct worlds paralleling each other. The devotees and those who take the devotional service will become more and more powerful. And at the same time, the, the materialists will become more and more destroyed by the, this age, not only in qualities, but in actual existence. So here, there's a warning given by Vidura that, um, you know, go north and reach to the Himalayas. Take up residence there and begin your devotional life. By doing that, you will uh, somehow free yourselves from the from the effects of the of Kali Yuga. And once you free yourselves from the chairs and other things, free yourself from the effects of Kali Yuga, then you, then it becomes easier, as it's mentioned here. Vidura wants his brother to become uh, undisturbed by happiness and distress, which leads to the next stage, which is Nara. The word Nara means man, and Tom means best, or the best of all men. So that word Naratam means one who is actually fixed 
in executing a devotional service. Prabhupada uses the word sannyasi as a synonym or a parallel to the word maratha, both and ultimately leading to the highest stage of devotional service where one is on what is called paramahansa. Hamsa means swan, para means the sea. So one who reaches that stage, as Prabhupada said, is the first grade devotee, in other words, the top most of all the money. And so uh, one has to seriously practice this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which is the, the means for destruction of the age of Kali. Kali Yuga Pavana, Kali Bhuyanasana, Sri Sachi Nandana Namre. That Lord Chaitanya is the Kali Yuga avatar in this age, and he's chasing away the dog of Kali with the stick of the holy name. And Kali is running from Lord Chaitanya. But Kali knows that Lord Chaitanya is here, and he is he is he is making his movement more and more prominent. But Kali's working fast. Sometimes the devotees and others conjecture, wow, this age of Kali, which is only 5,000 years into it, precedes such degradation and such horrors already in such an early part of this age. Why is that? And this is interesting because if you read the 12th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, this describes Kali Yuga and all of the other ages where Lord Chaitanya does not appear. But in this age, if the description of Kali Yuga is mostly mentioned in the 11th canto, at the same time, the appearance and the mission of Lord Chaitanya is mentioned simultaneously in that same area to show that because of Lord Chaitanya's presence, the effects of Kali Yuga will be destroyed. But Kali is a personality, and, he's not, and he is also very and cunning, so he knows. Mm, the Supreme Lord has come in this age. How will I ever become successful in capturing all of the minds and hearts of the conditioned souls? So he's working fast. That's why it appears that in this particular Kali Yuga we are in, degradation has already reached very high proportions where people are eating their own children. What is going on? Behind the scenes, which you don't even know, is quite horrific. Uh, it's uh, not even worth mentioning. Not no, well worth mentioning. We should not even mention it in an in assembly of decent people. What actually is happening? It is so bad. And that's Kali. He's moving fast, but Lord Chaitanya is not to be defeated. So for the devotees, they're not happy simply becoming. Free from the effects of Kali, they want to bring as many souls into that safety zone as possible and give them the opportunity to reach the Krishna conscious also. And the devotees are also um, uh, inspired to continue to push on this movement more and more and move back to the effects of Kali Yuga. So, out of the, all of the ages of uh, Man, uh, of course, there are four ages, such a yuga, the four yuga, such a yuga, great the yuga, the four yuga, the Kali yuga. Lord St. Tani appears only once in every 1,000 Kali yugas. So the other 999 Kali yugas, there's an incarnation of the Lord called Gaur Narayan. And he teaches only up to the level of Vaikuntha. Only when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes and he follows Sri Krishna himself, who, who leaves the world. This is this is what we're hearing now. Krishna is about to leave the world. Vidura knows that. As soon as Krishna leaves the world, that's the official end of the Pura Yuga and the advent of Kali Yuga. And he's warning his brother, the sage. Is very, very bad that is upcoming. Go to the north, fix yourself in meditation and prayer, and uh, reach perfection and go back in Dr. Bhatta. Don't waste time. Because if Kali Yuga comes in, you might find yourself in very difficult circumstances. He wants to break his attachment to his family, he's breaking his attachment to his 
material body. Vidarastra has lost everything, but still, even at the end of the battle of Purushetra, even though he had lost all of his sons, there was no chance for the Kurus to, to, to gain the kingdom. He took up residence the house of his enemy. He was living at the house of, uh, under the care of Yudhisthira, and Vidura was also there. And it's, there's one verse that is explained that just like a dog uh, gets the remnants of the food offered by the what is left over from the meal from the people who live there, Bhima was, was throwing his remnants to Vidura Here, this is the meal. In other words, he was in a very disgraceful situation. He was more like a, here he was, a king, and now he is more like a beggar and he's living very, let's say, almost like a vagabond. But the Vidura wants to save his brother and bring him to Krishna consciousness. Yeah, go to the north, don't waste time. The age of time is coming. Fix your mind on devotional service. Come to the stage of devotional service and go back home. Back to that home. But Vidura, and Vidura was constantly criticized by others and by Vidarashtra himself for trying to help the girls. He, he didn't give up on his brother. He loved his brother very much, but he could see that his brother was in a very awkward situation and there was nothing, no one else was really going to be able to help him. And the girl was strong. He both verses we told him, you were living like a dog with teeth were falling out. You can't see straight, you're getting old, you're senile, and better to go. His wife was still there, Gandhari was there, his face wife. And he said, he gave instructions to both of them, go to the north and finish out your life. And Vidura had to undergo so much humiliation and trying to help his brother, even by his brother, still he didn't give up. This is a quality of a great soul that sometimes in the process of preaching, uh, one gets criticized by the persons they preach to, or they get, what we say, they get opposed by the persons they preach to. They're not respected or honored by the persons they preach to. They're considered a threat by the, by the same persons that they're trying to help. But still, a great soul doesn't give up. That trying to give medicine to a sick person is not so easy. Therefore, sometimes we say, make it sweet so that so the medicine becomes more palatable, and more desirable. But what is that sweetness? That generation. <laughs> Take Krishna's prasadam. And live your life in devotion. Don't try to make a nice arrangement in this material world because it's also and any arrangement you make is always full of faults, and at the same time, it will be destroyed by the enemy. So, uh, yeah, so one. So this is a very, very important important part of the Bible time, uh, trying to instruct those who need it. But can't accept it. <laughs> and this is the case of Dina Rasa. He's definitely he's considered to be blind in two ways. Materially, can't see, spiritually, can't understand. He's a curse. But he has a well worship. So it only takes one well worship. Should have probably became our well worship. And even though we even oppose Prabhupada disagreed with Prabhupada, did not follow what he said, thought his many, his instructions were irrelevant, something that was good for India, but the rest of the world didn't really apply. Many people found fault or just didn't, was unable to really uh, appreciate what Prabhupada was giving. Uh, but Srila Prabhupada never gave up. <laughs> he never gave up. 
Um, and even if a person was trying, but couldn't do it, kept making mistakes, kept falling down, Prabhupada would never give up on that person. Always thinking of ways they could, he could somehow or other bring that person to at least to the chant of the holy names of the Lord. Okay, so this is a very, uh, let me say, uh, important point in our Krishna consciousness here that the age of Kali, Prabhupada said, don't stay around, get out before Kali. So don't come back in this age. It's not going to get any better. The age is like that. But fortunately, by Mahaprabhu's mercy, we have the means to get out. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 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 Thank you so much, Marsha. Such a wonderful class, and especially this class, I, I felt was a, a rude awakening that we had to hear over and over again because Kali Yuga is so crazy that it bewilders our minds to forget. And then Krishna's arrangement every morning. I, I was actually thinking, Marge, you know, how um, every morning we have Bhagavatam classes and how it's so important for us to hear. Like, I mean, I've heard that, but this morning just hearing from your class, I said, wow, the power of Bhagavatam class is so important because every morning it keeps us, it keeps our laziness in check, I feel. <laughs> keeps our minds in check. Like, you know, uh, I mean, like we started in the morning, you know, like we said, we have 10 people, you know, probably more will roll in now, we have 21. But, but Bhagavatam class keeps us in check to make us snap out and then probably we might sneak back in, roll in again <laughs> later on and then again come out. But we really need this much. It's such an amazing awakening. Thank you so much for um, slapping us. <laughs> Thank you so much for slapping us and waking us up. So powerful. Would like to ask devotees if any questions, um, clarification, please uh, do raise. There goes Prickshit. Go right ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my whole obeisances. All glories to the Prabhupada, all glories to Lotus Feet. Thank you very much for warning us about the this age. And especially when you made the point that the age has is deteriorating faster because Kali knows the effect of chanting Lord Chaitanya's um Sankitan movement would change things so just want to make it as bad as possible as quickly as possible that was one that I picked from um in one day in Lord Brahma uh, of Lord Brahma the Lord comes Lord Titania comes after Krishna comes and he said the other 999 days I was making notes who comes this Goran Narayan is that what you said yeah. Okay. Is that a reincarnation in the other 900? Because in each age, there is an incarnation of the Lord that mm. the process of the Dharma, the Yuga Dharma. Mm. It is the, the principles of Bhakti from the point of view of Aishwarya, who are worshipping the Lord in awe and reverence and attaining that mood in perfection, which allows one to reach the spiritual world, which is which is the mm. like the plans. The oven is not open. It's only open when Lord Ch when Lord Krishna comes. And Lord Krishna comes once also in nine hundred and ninety nine one thousand yugas. Mm. So he, when Lord Ch Krishna comes, then right after that Lord Chaitanya comes. Mm. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah. The Lord is always concerned about his, uh, his soul, the souls that are suffering in this material world. So, he always makes arrangements. Thank you, Maharaj. A any questions from devotees um, going down the list? Please do raise your hand. 
or I have, I have a group of devotees who are sitting with me. I was just about to say, I, I thought I could see some devotee heads, Prabhu. If they would like to ask a question to Prabhu. I mean, sorry, Maharaj. Um, Srimati Mataji, I think I see her. Not Srimati, Sri Devi, sorry. <laughs> Marge, if anyone else would like to ask a question from your group, Marge, that's fine, Marge, or I can um, ask here. So either way is fine with me, Marge. If you the... have a question, go ahead and we'll take your group as the preference and we'll get, let my group learn more. <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Anyone else has a question? Marge, there's a question that I would like to ask. And, uh, um, and you said uh, devotional service is now. Yeah. And we've heard that term many times, and we know that it's now. But at the same time, as you were mentioning, Maharaj, the effects of Kali Yuga, like you even said that it, even the good people in Kali Yuga will lose their good qualities because of the effects of Kali Yuga. So knowing that, Maharaj, and it's actually kind of sad and scary, how can we really understand the importance of now? And not later. Because the mind is such a rascal. It gives excuses. Well, there's different ways to approach that principle. But to understand how the, the material world works means that one cannot um, not, not project, you know, how long one has. That's always something we always think, well, I'm young and I'm going to live so many years or I'm this situation. Nobody's thinking so much about, you know, leaving. All of us are thinking how to make plans to improve our present situation. So the now situation really makes one aware of the facts that uh, um, in this world is padam padam yava pri padam. It's a dangerous place. And at any minute, any, at any time, Prabhupada was giving the example. They were walking in Denver, Colorado through this one park. I was at a very nice park here. But he said, the material world is such that at any time, this whole place could be ablaze with fire. And then all of a sudden, everything changes. We saw that. Uh, I was in uh, India in the year 19... 99 I think it was and we were sitting in Mumbai we were sitting in Radha Gopinath temple and all of a sudden in Gujarat huge earthquake it was so big it came all the way into Mumbai and in the room I was sitting in I was in the temple with Radha Swami in his room it was early in the morning it was, uh, it was around 4 30 in the morning around around just before Mangal Arti, the whole room shook. So it, everything shook for you know a few seconds or more, maybe 30 seconds or more. And then we later learned that thousands of people died in that earthquake. So all of a sudden, there's an earthquake. And I'm sitting in my uh, house in Croatia. I'm uh, chanting Japa. Uh, March, March 16th, no, March 22nd, March 22nd, 2020. I'm chanting, walking back and forth in my room. The whole building starts to shake. Hot pictures are flying off the walls, crashing. Things are moving around the room. And then all of a sudden I was with another person. He said, Maharaj, let's go. So we had to run down the stairs and get out of the building. We jumped in the car and we went to a, a place where the area was free. So, you know, I'm, I'm just Janet Joplin, like an ordinary every day. First, I thought, wow, everything's shaking. It must be ecstatic symptoms. <laughs> but, but it wasn't like that. <laughs> but then the shake was continuous and I thought, oh, so, and I lived in that place for years and I didn't even realize we were, we were, we were living on, an, uh, on the epicenter of the earthquake fall, right in the center of it. Nobody ever told us that. And after that thing shaked, eight people died in that area, in around that area. 
buildings were big, big parts of buildings fell off and were landing on cars and smashing people and cars. So this is an example how all of a sudden, boom, material energy changes and you're in the complete different zone. It's just the way it is. That's the nature of this world. So what is now? Now means that there's no such thing as later because later is a stage of uh, state of mind and now is the only reality. Now is the only reality. If someone asks you what time it is, it's always now. It's always now. We plan, it says you should, you should live in the present and plan for the future. You have to live in the present because the quality of the future depends on what you do in the present. As you develop in the present, you actually make, you, you, you arrange the future in the same way. So therefore there's no time, there's no sense of, well, later. Later, it means just, um, an excuse for not doing something. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives it in a, in a verse in one of his songs. Uh, Forget the past that sleeps, near the future dream it all, act in times that are with thee, and progress ye shall call. A very nice poetic expression, he's saying, the past, gone. The future is a dream. The present is the only reality. We can, I mean, in a reflective way, we can learn from the past. We can plan for the future, but we have to live in the present. You can't live in the future or in the past. People do that. They live in the future by making plans for happiness. And they, they get so absorbed in their plans for happiness that they uh, forget about the present. And they lament about what happened in the past and they live in the, the sorrows of the past or in the dream state of the past. You know, everybody sits together and they look at pictures, oh yes, that's you when you were oh when you were so young, you're so cute. Look at you now, you're so ugly. <laughs> what happened? Well, that's called time. <laughs> so, yeah, so this this uh the this is the reality. And there was one yogi, he was a he was a yogi who was popular during the time when I was, you know. Just learning about life, like when I was a teenager, and the um, he wrote a book called "Be Here Now." It was by a person called Baba Ram Das, Richard Alpert, and he was a, a person who took drugs, LSD, and used LSD to. Uh, but he had one clear understanding: is that. The only reality is now. So that's so that that also applies in the Krishna conscious way. Now is the time for Krishna. And Prabhupada said you can be Krishna conscious in an instant. As soon as you fully absorb yourself in Krishna, you are fully Krishna conscious. And you can take years and never get anywhere. You simply waste time. But don't apply the principle of the immediacy of Krishna consciousness. It cannot be put on hold. Thank you, Maharaj. That was um, very strong and very deep. Thank you so much. Would like to ask devotees if you have any questions and also if you could please um, turn on your videos so that Maharaj can see us um, and as 
if you know if you're not on the road you know driving or anything please uh do turn on your videos we we humbly request you so that we can thank you so that you know maharaj can see us and we can see him Arivo. any questions from devotees any reflections any thoughts um, yes Nitya gopal go ahead Hare krishna maharaj danutanam jai sri prabhupad uh, wonderful wonderful class very very nice i was contemplating on the thought how vidura has a compassion for uh, dhritarashtra similarly i remembering remembering the sila prabhupads and his uh, disciples compassion for all the jiva so how sila prabhupad came and gave the krishna consciousness to the whole world the way vidura came back and awakened uh, dhritarashtra i was just thinking on that thought Maharaj. thank you so much yeah, he had to undergo a lot of uh, difficulties in order to do what he did, but he never gave up on it. He never let personal inconvenience or the reverse discourage him from continuing his mission. So that was one of his most amazing characteristics that uh, he had genuine feelings for the conditions. Aside from wanting to fulfill the instructions of his spiritual master, Prabhupada was really feeling for the sufferings of others. That was that was his inner mood. And he exhibited that sometimes. There are many incidents that kind of illustrate that feeling that Prabhupada had. So yeah, that's uh, that's a great soul. They they feel for the sufferings of others. And they're willing to make personal sacrifices in order to relieve the people's suffering. And if you actually take that principle to a next stage, it takes that kind of sacrifice to actually change people's lives. Well, God quoting his spiritual master, but he also referred to himself and said, it takes 300 gallons of blood to make one devotee. Not easy. Marge, you made a comment uh, earlier on uh, in um, uh, following up with Nita Gopal's question. Very nice question. Very, very nice realization. Is you you are sharing how much um, um, Sri Prabhupada also came to sacrifice and never gave up and followed his spiritual master. And if we look at the verses, Marge, uh, you know, in the in the few previous verses by um, Vidur's instructions to Dhritarashtra. Um, I remember, I think last week, uh, I forgot who was, I think it was Hariyashwa Prabhu from Philadelphia was giving the class and he was saying that the words that Vidur used were very strong, you know, yeah, they were not palatable, sweet, <laughs> comforting words, they are very strong, you have this, you have bile, you have milk, you know, like very strong words, right? And it's because, like you said, Marge, it's because of care and concern. As devotees, most practicing devotees in Krishna consciousness, trying to serve as much as we can for Sri sure Prabhupada's mission, how can we uh, develop the mood of um, sacrificing or coming out of our comfort zone and really seeing that when someone comes to us, you know, with a pushing us, you know, really pushing us to grow, that it's love. And really coming out of the comfort zone. How can we develop that mode of sacrifice, Marge? How to become that instrument for others? Yes, Maharaj. Like really coming out, because sometimes, you know, we tend to be very comfortable, <laughs> especially after COVID. <laughs> How can we really come out of, yeah, be like a real instrument? I think it begins with understanding. Uh, that someone had sacrificed for me, and therefore I'm I'm benefited. I'm fortunate. So there is a sense of gratitude that comes with that. 
And that gratitude will help to inspire oneself to maybe let me do try to do something to help others. And that feeling of, well, someone did something to help me and I'm in a good position or better position. Now I have the same uh, mercy. Now let me uh, see what I can do to help others. And that's one aspect of it, and that's the essence. But another aspect is uh, my spiritual master, and in this case, we can also say Srila Prabhupada, and that's what he would like. He, he said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually says it. It's in the, uh, it's in the uh, seventh chapter of Adi Lula. I can't remember the verses. But he says, um, He's begging each and every one of us to help him distribute this mercy. He says, I'm a gardener and I have many fruit. And this fruit is in the form of a storehouse full of fruit. And I've been able to taste this fruit and this fruit is very sweet. And I want to distribute this sweet fruit to everyone and anyone. But how can I do that? I'm only one person. So please, Assist me in distributing all these fruits. Taste the fruits yourself and give them to others. The Mahaprabhu is actually pleading with us to actually, in a direct way, to uh, help. So, uh, you know. So, you might think, well, I'm not so qualified. I'm just a, a housewife or a, a working person. How much time do I have? But everyone can do something. It's not so much how much you do, it's the fact that you make an attempt to assist your spiritual master or to somehow or other um, uh, you know, the idea in the Christian tradition there is uh, this commandment, which is considered the first of the Ten Commandments, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul. And the second commandment is to love your brother as yourself, mm -hmm. which means to whatever is good for you, that you've been benefited, try to give it to others. So that's what it means to love your brother, is that you have something that's benefited you. I want to share it. So it's this knowledge, it's this way of life, it's this, uh, it's this, yeah, it's the knowledge and the way of life. So um, when we think about it, we think, well, oh, yeah, I've been fortunate. So let me share with others. And that's the principle of, uh, of human life is that you'll see even in an ordinary day-to-day -day life, when somebody, something happens to a person and they become happy because of it, or they become benefited from it, they think, let me share it with someone. I want to share that happiness with, with someone, or I want to also give that benefit to someone else. That's normal. So you take that same principle and you expand it into, you know, all right, Krishna consciousness is the success of life. I have, at least I have some understanding. Let me try to share it mm. quite or other. Uh, we also gave a class one time when we were up in Canada. We were trying to think how many different ways can you preach Krishna consciousness, looking for different outlets. We came up with close to 40 different ways to preach Krishna consciousness. The devotees were really brainstorming and coming up with things, such as radio preaching, uh, you know, putting books in hospitals, writing books, uh, you know, just thinking of different ways that you could preach through the computer, through, uh, going out and distributing prasadam. When you actually sit down and you really start thinking, you come up with so many ways. 
No, it's not limited to just speaking philosophical teachings. Therefore, it becomes more easily for people to adopt it according to how best they can connect with it. If you're an artist, you know, you can paint pictures of Krishna and share those big pictures with others. Prabhupada would say you know, all of his artists that painted pictures under his guidance, he says these pictures are, are, are windows into the spiritual world. And people come and they see the pictures in the temples, they actually become Krishna conscious. Observing the picture it leads to discussion. It has an expression. An expression. So this, would be, this is Krishna, and this is what Krishna is doing. We have Bhakti Vriksha, and we have Bhamha, and so many ways. We have Sunday trees, Yadavati Yadra. Thank you so much, Marge. That was really um, amazing. Yeah, and, and especially, Marge, where when you said, and, and I like the first point, very much uh, resonated with me, that if, if we think that someone um, brought me, you know, make me, so I should, some, no, someone sacrificed for me, that was a very, uh, that really was pretty strong for me, Marge. Thank you so much for um, sharing that. Makes, definitely can, uh, start to make a change in our consciousness, our thinking that someone sacrificed for me. It was pretty heavy. Thank you, Marge. Srimati, yeah. go ahead. Hare uh, Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All the to share, Prabhupada. It's so nice to see you um, after a long time. And uh, devotees also, we are all missing on the call. Guru Maharaj, please come back soon. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much for the class. Um, my question is, yes, Guru Maharaj? We want you to come here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> so, my question is, Guru Maharaj, like, um, I see most of the time we have uh, this postponement mentality. Like, we don't do things uh, right now. Um, we just think, okay, we have still time. We'll do it later. What's urgent? <laughs> so this type of mentality I see a lot um, because the life is happening. So many things are going around. Um, uh, so we always postpone things. So how to handle this type of situations? So if I, um, if, um, if we push, so we'll be too much pushy. <laughs> so by encouraging and by um, uh, talking nicely, how we can make things going on, like make it like serious, like we have to do it now, not postpone these things. Um, I would say prioritize your life in terms of uh, importance. Um, sometimes you, know, you need to sit down and actually put it on paper. So there are devotees who every day when they begin their day, they write what they're going to do throughout the day at the different times. And, uh, you know, some things you can get to immediately, some things may take a little while, and some things, when the situation is right, you can start to do it. But when you talk about Krishna consciousness, there is no, there's no such thing. As that. It's always now. You can always change. Can always uh, associate with devotees. You can always somehow or other do some kind of worship and prayer. That you cannot wait. But using your your example, yeah, it's just the tendency of the conditioned souls to postpone things. So we postpone things that maybe are difficult to do, or things that we don't really feel so attracted to do. But at the same time, they they have to get done. There's a kind of a, a joking cliche. So why wait to the last minute when you can wait to the last second? Mm 
So it's just a, it's just a feature of this age where people find the immediate to be the uh, important. Yes, good Maharaj. Thank Maharaj, you. there's one question that I would like to pick you back on Srimati because I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> she and I have been really connecting very nicely, I have to say, and I appreciate that, you know, uh, we talk and it's been nice to connect with her. So thank you for giving me that opportunity, Srimati Mataji. Maharaj, there's also this, um, um, this mentality, you know, of, somebody will do it right and that somebody ends up being nobody <laughs> you know and, and i get that oh mother dear, don't worry somebody will do it no mother dear, somebody will do it and then somebody ends up either you or nobody <laughs> you know and 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 that mentality and i don't know much if that somebody 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 is uh is a is is a escape zone as they call it like how to get myself out of it or if it's just procrastination or laziness or what it is but how can we overcome that somebody 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 because it always ends up being nobody Marge. <laughs> or it's us <laughs> well hmm. i have that problem too yeah i know that you as a temple president i'm sure you get that all the time Okay, you have to run your temple and there's something to do and you're looking for somebody and you ask somebody and they say, don't worry, somebody will do it. And it's a feature of, of temple presidents and people who have project responsibilities. So, uh, yeah. I, I think you need to sit down and just Kind of like discuss it and say, well, this is your service, and then you have a what they call it. What is that thing? An accountability program. And people have to be accountable for what they say they're going to do. Nobody's going to tell you you have to chant Hare Krishna. Nobody's going to watch you to see if you're doing it or not doing it. It's not to you. Um, but you understand the importance of it, so you do it. But then you can, when it comes to reading, you might think, well, if I don't read, I can still go on. So you somehow or other relegate that to a lesser importance. And then the immediate, which is always coming up, and of course, every, every day there's always something new that has to be dealt with as it comes up. And you start pushing these other things away, and then sometimes you even forget about it. So that's where management comes in. And then you have to really organize things in such a way that things don't fall through. And you have to find people who are responsible, take on the responsibility. Um, sometimes it becomes a duty, and other times it becomes just an option where somebody will volunteer to do it. So I have that concern also. I have projects, and I sometimes put people in, I don't do it always, but people get put in place in the project, and somehow as time goes on, they just don't do it. And then I have to wonder what's happening. Well, we'll get to it. <laughs> when we don't get to it. That is definitely a challenge that I face quite a bit, Maharaj. So what you need in terms of a management scheme is you need what is called a second person who is Mr. Nobody Likes. You're the good guy, you're on the top. 
And then you have your assistant who keeps telling everybody, get it done. <laughs> and he, he, because he has that nature, he doesn't care what people think about him. So, and then, uh, and then every time people complain to you about him, you just smile and say, "Don't worry, I'll take it." So we call it the, the good guy, bad guy role. <laughs> the guy on the top is the good guy. He's always friendly, smiles, and then we need a bad guy to push everybody else, whether they like it or not. He <laughs> can. Okay. He can be the bouncer, right, Maraj? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. But I just found that all of my disciples are so sweet, I can't find any bad guys. <laughs> Maraj, I, I, I was going to say the same thing. I end up being the bad guy and the police patrol and the <laughs> <laughs> everything because nobody no, wants to be the bad guy. <laughs> You have to be the good guy. The guy <laughs> on the top is the good guy. And the bad guy is the one that works. The good guy says, hey, get him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes, you know. <laughs> I'll try to find the bad I'll, I'll try to find the bad guy bouncer in my temple, March. I think that's gonna yeah. be my 2023 mission. <laughs> There's always one around, don't worry. <laughs> Yes, Marge. I'm going to work on that for sure to find a bad guy. <laughs> and then when the, when people complain about the bad guy, you say, "All right, I'll worry. I'll talk to him." And you know, don't say that. Well, that's amazing, Marge. Oh my God! <laughs> Another good guy. <laughs> I just one of one of very close friend has just appeared and I haven't seen him in years. So and he sneaked up behind you. Yeah, when you turn around, who's gonna be there? <laughs> Maharaj did um um uh, Dirk Krishna said that we need a training program to develop bad guys for this purpose, Maharaj. What do you think, Maharaj? <laughs> He's got to find him. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Any questions from devotees? Any thoughts? Any reflection? Um, clarification, please. Um, Three days I'm sorry, second marriage? Sri Devi, she has her hand up. Oh, Sri Devi. Where, she's in the crowd back there, right, Maharaj? Yeah. She can be a bad guy, too. <laughs> Actually, she and I will make a very good team if she was in the U.S. <laughs> oh, yeah, she'd be good, yeah. He can, yeah, she needs some engagement. <laughs> yeah, I, I need someone like her. Come on, Sri Devi, move back. <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> Not a joke, it's just inside. <laughs> so, okay, Sri Devi, she's going to talk to me and talk to you at the same time. <laughs> oh, okay. But Sri Devi, I can't hear you, Mataji. I'll repeat the question. Okay, Marge. He's here in this temple for how Gandhari benefited simply by following the Drashta. And we hear many examples of powerful spiritual warriors and their wives simply reap the benefit of following them. But today, here in Kaliyo, how can women also become Hira and Narottam and Paramahansa? So 
Shri Devi, I don't know how to be Dira because I'm in a woman's body and in my service, how do I be Dira? <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> well, you have to be. You got no choice. Marsh, I, th I think the only time I'm in Dira Marsh is when my day is about to end and I'm so tired at the night and I become like a bear. <laughs> um. I guess the question is, how can one be female body, Idira? It's not like Krishna consciousness is relegated to one gender. But it's not so much being Dira, it's being Krishna conscious in this sense. So I don't think you have to, the gopis, you can't say the gopis were actually Dira in the sense of the terminology or the definition of the word, but they loved Krishna so much that nothing else was important. So in one sense, that is called, you know, that is one pointed, one pointed focus. They focus simply on Krishna exclusively. So I think, Following, you're talking, if you're talking about people who are in a married life, then that, that, that opens up a whole discussion about the dynamics of a relationship and how that plays itself out. But it's not like one person becomes Krishna conscious and the other one simply follows or supports. They go together, isn't it? As they're, as they're working together, serving together, they're advancing together. More like a team that's on the same, same uh, theme, same, same mindset. So even if the wife finds it difficult to be dear, if the husband is exhibiting that, she also can help, to, she can also develop those qualities. Or she can support him in his role of becoming dear. And then she benefits from that automatically, even if she's not completely dear. She reminds him, yeah, just Krishna. Maharaj, that's a question here by Dear Krishna. And he's asking, and in, in relation to what you just spoke on, Maharaj, he said, Maharaj, is it like being Dira in regards to the material world? No, is be Dira in regards to the material world, but become the Adira for service, no, for Krishna and his devotion on, in, in his devotional service? Dira is a supportive principle. It allows one not to be disturbed by the change of the material energy. In other words, dira means not moved by happiness and distress, but is fixed on devotional service. Happiness may come, distress may come, or the features that cause happiness and distress will come. But the person is fixed in devotional service. That's, that's someone who is actually on the platform of devotional service, which includes Dira. Dira is like a foundational building block by which one can practice Krishna conscious successfully. Those who are Adira or easily moved by the, the changing of the material energy cannot be, cannot be uh, fixed in Krishna consciousness. So, but we tell people just Use your time to focus all of your time in devotional service. That's all. And as Maya presents her allurements or her distractions, then you have to be able to recognize it and not be allured by it or distracted by it. That comes from good good japa. Yeah. If your japa is good, your mind is fixed throughout the day. 
generally. So the strength of our sadhana is the foundation by which we build all of these qualities. Yeah. Thank you, Marj. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. oh, yes, but, uh, yeah. is it a like sometimes people say that uh, like he has like he is totally not affected by the chain, and is it a thin line between like being lazy and Gira or like yeah, not lazy of, but maybe not caring or lack of enthusiasm or like For Krishna and tell we were talking about this the Napareham. There are different kinds of people who react to situations. Some reciprocate, some don't reciprocate, and some reciprocate according to how um, what comes. And that's based on relationship. And I think your question is more on, on relationship. But Vera really refers more like if something happens to you in your life, does it increase your Krishna consciousness or does it take it away? So the devotees will use any situation because we're both of Krishna conscious and they start to see Krishna in anything. Therefore, they can use any situation to, uh, to go deeper into their Krishna conscious or to develop some kind of detachment and maybe more dependence on Krishna. But when it comes to working with other people, there's a concern that comes with that and that you have to deal with. So uh, it's not like you're emotional, and that's called demon. As a doctor, you don't want to uh, put yourself in a position of the patient, but at the same time, you have to be concerned about what the patient is going through so you can understand how and how to administer the cure. So there's a genuine concern that needs to be investigated in terms of, well, what does this person need? Well, sometimes that takes the form of certain emotions, certain questions. So there's a concern there. It's not like, well, um, I was, I used to be criticized for that, but I didn't care about anything. <laughs> yeah, you know, Christian, Christian consciousness and things. Mm -hmm. It's like not being awake. <laughs> we chant Haribo. <laughs> so when it, when it comes to dealing with other people, there you have to put your attention, mind, and even the emotional concern into it in order to uh, help to assist in some way. You can't be detached from the result. You detach from the results, but at the same time, you're attached to the service. Thank you, Maharaj. Really amazing points, amazing questions too. Any questions from devotees, any clarification, either online or those that are in person with Maharaj over there, uh, please do ask your question or you can post it in the chat and I will be happy to read it. <clears throat> Let me go down the list so I don't miss anyone here. Okay, if there isn't a question, Maharaj, would you like to end with a round of chanting, Maharaj? Uh, Shri Devi wants a clarification on one point. So oh, she... sure, please. Yes, Maharaj, please. So then, so the question I asked you, Maharaj, the answer is that everyone and anyone can become spiritual. And the uh, stages, whether one is in a spiritual man, body, a woman's body, 
Well, it is Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhu Kabunoi, Ravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi. In the hearts of all living entities, your love for Krishna is there. In the human form of life is the advantage. This morning I was just reading in the Bhagavatam, there's a statement in the purport by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati that the human form of life is an advantage over other, all other forms of life. And including the demigods, because the demigods have too much material enjoyment. So it's, it's hard for them to, you know, put that aside and really perform austerities and become fixed in spiritual life. And those in lower, other situations lower than the human beings, too much suffering. So the conclusion is too much happiness and too much suffering are both disqual not disqualifications, but different makes things very difficult for practicing Krishna practice. Therefore, in the human form, there is meant to be a balance of that. So, and we see even in the human form, if people have too much material opulence, become enamored by that, we can't feelingly execute devotional service. Not possible. Uh, there's a famous statement in the Christian tradition that for a rich man to go to heaven is like, like a camel going through the eye of a needle. So the eye of a needle was a gate in Jerusalem where um, when they would come to the gate, the camel have, would have to unload everything and then go down and only then could that camel get through that gate, which was called the eye of the needle. So the, the, the understanding is that one has to get rid of all of one's material baggage, where well, one can actually enter into the, the realm of spiritual purification. Nice. I learned something new about the the gate. I completely forgot it until you spoke and Pritchett just confirmed that. I was like, wow. Thank you for bringing that point up, Mars. It's really powerful. Yeah, I mean, there's truth in it. There's truth everywhere, and you just have to find it. Yeah. I just forgot the, the Christian studies after becoming a devotee, unfortunately, being raised a Christian. <laughs> so it was. That's what we usually do. Okay. And these things come back. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that point. It's really, really powerful because I've heard my dad say it so many times when I was growing up, and it's, nice, it's a nice reminder. Thank you so much. Any yeah. other questions from devotees? Any thoughts? Marge, is are, are there um, are questions over there, Marge, that devotees would like to ask? They're all in meditation right now. Okay. Would you like to, <laughs> Marge, would you like to end with a round of chanting since they're all in a very <laughs> meditative mood, Marge? You know. Okay, they all agreed. Okay. They're, they're all reaching for their bead bags. All right, so we'll we'll do one round together. Yes, March. <laughs> <laughs>